Welcome back, everybody, to Toro Cigar Lounge Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Cigar Mike. Stay tuned today, ladies and gentlemen. You are not going to want to miss this one. Cigar Lounge do's and don'ts. We got them for you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. In a world desperate to separate us by our differences, there's still a place where you can go where all are welcome. The Cigar Lounge. Welcome to the Toro Cigar Lounge Podcast. All right, and we are back. Again, I'm your host, Mike Glover, a.k.a. 757 Cigar Mike. Today, I'm smoking the Stolen Thrones Crook of the Crown. Real quick, we're going to go around and introduce our, uh, ourselves to everybody. We'll start at the end with Mr. Jake. I'm Jake, a.k.a. Bearded Cigar Lover. Do me a favor and go follow Family by Loyalty Cigars. Ooh, switching it up on us. Don't follow them. Follow them. Follow them. Oh, follow geez. them. I thought you said. Uh, well, last show. I said don't follow show, said, me. Don't follow me. I said don't follow me. Go follow Family by Loyalty Cigars. Okay, he did it correctly. All right. I'm just Robin. I don't have one of those cool cigar monikers. I need to come up with one. You do need to come I'm, up. I, with I one. guess I'm Guitar Robin or something like that. I don't know. Robin, I'm smoking the Warhead, uh, otherwise known as AKA Brain Trust Head Honcho. <laughs> Been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm going to introduce myself in a moment but robin definitely man if you're going to be a regular on here you got to have like a call sign or something yeah, i mean dude. obviously i do have a call sign don't, okay what's the call sign my brain, my brain trust call sign is the bird the bird yes i mean well that makes sense the bird yes. is the word yeah <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew if I set him up, he would do that. I knew it. All right. I am Ken Blue Smoke on Instagram. Please, please, please do follow me. I, I have so few followers. I used to call myself Instagram famous. I'm, I can't grow. I'd follow I can't you, grow. You keep Instagram running won't things. let me grow. <laughs> How many followers do you have now? 12 something or other. 12? Yeah, like, no, I'll do twelve hundred. Oh, okay. I mean, God knows what you people are thinking when you follow me, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I am smoking the New Founders Connecticut. It is a magnificent cigar. I I've split the damn thing with uh, Mike's rusty uh, <laughs> cigar cutter. I didn't tell him to use it. Mm, anyway, Jake, did you say what you were smoking? I am smoking the S and R from uh, Blackworks. You know. So something, something different. It was the one, one limited release cigar last year they dropped that I haven't tried yet. You know, I, I made it through 2023 without trying it. So I figured I owe it to James Brown and the boys to try it. <laughs> and it's great. There you go. Robin, did you say what you were smoking? Yeah, I did. Yeah, he did. Okay. He did. Very good. All right. Right on into it then. Let's get, let's get knee deep into it. Cigar lounge do's and don'ts. Anybody got a top do? I have a top do. So most cigar lounges, there's these legal restrictions on being able to, say, have an open bar. Certainly here in Virginia, that's for sure. Yeah. But if you, in your backpack, have a fine um, alcoholic beverage that you would like to share with your friends, you can do that legally in front of God and everybody. Hand out a drink or two. To your friends. They that kind of suggest cigar... it on the down low, though, because a lot of places I know, like I used to work at Emerson's, there were some people that went in there and were open and pretty nasty and everything like that. But if you keep it on the down low and just kind of kind of relax, it's it's all the better for everyone. Right. Don't advertise it. There's yeah. no need to advertise. And don't get drunk and be an ass. Yeah. Right. And there are plenty of cigar lounges all over the country that are BYOB, and it's not an issue. Yeah. But, so, BYOB, by all means, do... B Y O B. Do. That's a good do. Jake, you got a good do? Yeah. yeah. Do. Be respectful and don't be a dick to everybody. Yeah. You know, everybody's there for a reason. They like cigars. I don't care about your politics. I don't care about your religion. I don't care who, what, critters, people, whatever you like to sleep with. <laughs> you know. I mean, if you're a donkey guy, that's all it's on, on you. We don't need to know about it. <laughs> that's you illegal. Know, don't, don't, don't do that. Only Be respectful. Have great conversations. Don't go in there just looking for to stir the pot. That's not what anybody's there for. You know, go have a good conversation. Maybe meet somebody new. You got to stir the pot on the internet section of 
I mean, on the comment section of YouTube or whatever, wherever you're listen, listening to this, you got to stir the pot there. I was going to say, Jake, you took one of mine. You, you're like hitting four or five of them, most of which I wanted to hit. But I was going <laughs> to say, do talk to other people while you're there. Yeah. Get to know other people. That's what it's all about is just enjoying cigars together. Yeah. Do be a good human. Yep. Do be a good human. Be courteous. Be courteous. Be friendly. Be open-minded. Uh, do try new things. Do ask your tobacconist for assistance if you want or need help selecting a cigar. That's a little tough around here. It, it is tough around Hampton Roads. You know, that's one of the things I wish cigar lounges would do better is have educated people behind the counter. Absolutely. That was actually a nice thing about Emerson's is they put us through training. Yeah. Uh, it was usually every week, but it, during COVID, it slowed down a little bit. But we always had training where we'd have uh, the factory representatives or one of the salespeople come out and sit down with us. And of course, you know, they had to bring some samples along for us to try. Oh my God, twist my arm. Um, but yeah, they, they brought some really good cigars right. and, and they told us about the cigars and it, that was our continuing education. Yeah, because if you're in a cigar lounge and you're working there, it only makes sense that you should know something about what you're selling. Now, are they still doing that? I think they've gotten away from that. Yeah, they, they well, I, I left kind of at the height of, of COVID too. Um, so... I don't know. I know that they knocked it off when it was really bad, but uh, I, I have been told that they've ha have it had some trainings, but I don't know if they were doing it on the same schedule that we were doing on when I was working there. Right, right. You know, the other thing I'll say this, along with training, you know, you'll find people in there that never smoke cigars. They want an end to the business. Yeah. Yep. And if you're in a lounge and the people there are really nice, but they, they're not big cigar people or whatever, do, a, do that person a solid and help them enjoy the cigars, you know, show them how to cut it properly, show them how to light it properly. And I'm not saying you do it for them. Like, you know, show them how to do it so they can do that it themselves mm -hmm. and they learn a little bit, you know, cause we've all seen people cut cigars wrong. We've all seen them light them wrong. We've all seen them do stupid stuff. Hey, maybe they're just new. Yeah. Give them a little help. Right. Yeah, like if the only exposure you have to a cigar is a movie, then you're probably going to bite off the end. That's not an optimal way. <laughs> That's not an optimal way to get a cigar going. No. Cigars aren't meant to be eaten. No. <laughs> not at all. Well, cigar lounges are funny places um, because they're kind of the melting pot of society. One of the few bastions left in, in uh, capitalist America where you can sit down, have a cigar with a doctor or a plumber or a garbage man and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, it, it's a unique environment. Um, if you are a cigar smoker and you've never been to a lounge, because there are plenty of people out there that stop by a cigar shop, buy a box, go home and smoke them. Right. And that's where they smoke them. Yep. But I would encourage you, if they have a lounge area, have a seat. Have a seat, sit down, join the conversation, enjoy a cigar. And, you know, it, it can be a little intimidating for the first time. It, that's, that's a given. But... Give it a shot, man. I think you'll find it's a whole new world of people open up to you. That's how men are programmed to to be self sufficient. But you can open yourself to the universe in a cigar lounge and meet somebody who could easily be a lifelong friend. Yeah. Which is not it's not something you're gonna you know, you're not gonna meet that person on the street. Or in your kitchen. Or, or in your kitchen. kitchen. Right. Yeah. You gotta get out there into the world yeah. and you gotta say hi. Yeah. And you got to say, what are you smoking? Especially in today's world. Too many people get caught up in the, in the busyness of life. They yeah. get up, they, they get dressed, they go to work, they work all day, they come home, and they, they're with their family, and then that's it. That's, that's all they do. It's the same routine, day after day after day after groundhog day. Groundhog day is what it is. It's mm -hmm. kind of a groundhog day. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great point. You know, something else, cigar lunches, and this, I want your opinion on this by all means. I think, you know, you go to a lounge, put your cell phone down. Yeah. Yeah. Force yourself out of your comfort zone and have that conversation. Yeah. You don't go to a cigar lounge to, you know, sit around with a bunch of other people staring at your cell phones. Uh, yeah. Definitely go out and meet some people. I was going to say, uh, one of my best friends, I met him at a cigar lounge, actually at Emerson's before I started working there. Um, and he and I are starting a guitar building business. So uh, you'll never know who you, who you meet at a cigar shop. Absolutely. We've okay. been friends for like nine years now. And yeah, great guy. How's that cigar business? Um, 
Guitar dang business? It. Guitar Too much business. port. <laughs> Cigars and guitars. Yeah, I'm confused. Too close too all the together. Time. How's the guitar business going for you guys? Uh, it's actually going very well. Um, I started a couple of actually. I started like five guitars over uh, uh, New Year's Eve weekend. I saw your uh, your new double neck. Which one just made its debut? Which one? Oh, the the red one. Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, it being a brand new instrument, there were a couple of parts that I that I bought you know, high end parts that I bought that failed immediately. Oh, uh, so I've no. got to tear it down to parade rest and, and uh, replace a couple parts on it, which is kind of disappointing, but I got a hold of the manufacturer. The manufacturer was actually really apologetic and they actually sent me a bunch of replacement parts for it. So I'm not kicking them to the curb yet, but yet, uh, yet. <laughs> but it's going well. Um, like I say, I started a bunch of new guitar projects over the weekend and, uh, I will be posting pictures on my Facebook page, which right now is just Robin Feathers or FA Amplification uh, on Facebook. You can see my guitars and amps and stuff there. Um, you should definitely check that out. He, he builds uh, very cool stuff. I try. So what, what are some of the biggest don'ts in a cigar lounge? Oh, Don't fart. <laughs> you won't smell it anyway in some of the lounges. They have no ventilation. That's, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about, how about uh, Ken's favorite? Don't be a dick. Man, yeah. we've covered that so many times. <laughs> but it, but here's the problem: people are still being a dick, yeah. so we've got to keep bringing <laughs> it up. Keep yeah. bringing it up, man. Don't. Yeah, it's it's true. You know, you go there, you want to meet people. I think in general, if we can have any influence on the cigar industry at all, we could tell people: look, go out to your cigar lounge and meet people. Don't be a dick and and meet people for right. sure. Right. Absolutely. One of one of uh, my pet peeves is people who are excessively loud. You're in a cigar lounge. It's a business. They're trying to trying to deal with customers there. Don't be loud. Uh, we've had I've had many times to tell people, hey, quiet. I'm trying to, you know, I can't even hear the customer at the register. So, you know, watch your volume when you're there and just be be mindful of the fact that you are in a, in a but professional But what if business. your favorite team is losing and you have to get into a fist fight with someone? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they must be a Dallas fan. Uh, well, probably. <laughs> well, you know, that is a rating on the side of their helmet, right? Yeah, the one star. One star. One star rating. <laughs> no, that's a good point. It's a good point, though. Volume is an issue. And yep. whether whether it's you being loud with your friends or watching a sporting event uh, or, or whatever, most people are there to relax, have a conversation um, with, with other friends or maybe make new friends. It's a entirely difficult to do that if the volume in the entire lounge is so loud you can't yeah. hear each other talk yeah we were in a lounge one time <laughs> on a sunday afternoon and there was a space alien movie on <laughs> and the volume was at what 58 yeah almost all the way up well you know i solved the problem the next week when i went there ah uh, yes you did I, I got there early i hit every remote and then sat there like the cat that ate the canary mm -hmm. and i watched everybody there Hunt Everyone. for the remotes. <laughs> uh, every every one of the people that worked there was hunting for the remotes, and some of the regulars were hunting for hunting for it. But I knew where they were the whole time, and I just sat there and smoked my cigar in peace and <laughs> acted like I didn't know shit because it was quiet and I could have a conversation with the people with me. Did they actually find them? Oh, I, well, I, I told them where they were when I left. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, it was in my pocket the whole time. Yeah. Son of a gun. Right beside your pocket sand. <laughs> yeah. So so what's your biggest don't in a lounge? Since you've you know, you've had the experience of working there, other than volume, what's one of the other big pet peeves that you have? I already told you my one. Is that the biggest one? <laughs> yeah, that's the biggest one. Just just, you know, try to be mindful of yeah. And add to that the fact that, you know, I'm old and worked on aircraft carriers for 20 years and I've got ringing in the ears really bad and if somebody's really loud, it can it can hurt. Mm -hmm. But that's I just me. I do have I do have one, and a lot of uh, lounge owners talk about this on on social media all the time. And that that is, you need to buy a cigar when you're there. Yeah. Don't don't bring your stock in and, and smoke three cigars and not buy anything. You're they're providing the place. They're providing the TV and the internet connection, and the the the, the climate control and the um, you know ventilation and everything. They're making you comfortable. You There's should, overhead. Yeah. Definitely. So buy do support them. them. Yeah. Again, don't be a dick, a dick. and just use it as an advantage. <laughs> yeah. You know, support the lounges that you go to. Right. Do buy a cigar. Don't be a dick. Uh, adding on to that, at Emerson's, there used to be a couple of regulars there that acted kind of like they owned the place. Um, 
and they kind of they they pushed the don't be a dick thing to to the limits they just acted like they owned the place and you know every time they walked in the first thing they do is grab the remote and yeah that's just that's just not cool at all what are you yeah. talking about like what kicking kicking your shoes off in the in the lounge and just making nobody wants to smell that crap put those back on <laughs> <laughs> who knows last time ken washed his socks <laughs> It smells just, like donkey in here. <laughs> my, my, my one of my big don'ts is don't be a mooch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go in there and just asking people for cigars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's not what we're there for. You know, cigars are a luxury item. If you're in a lounge, buy a cigar. Don't expect yeah. everybody else to supply your cigars. Yeah. That's a yeah. fine line, though, because, I mean, obviously, you shouldn't go there expecting people to give you right, cigars. Right. But one of the nice things about being a cigar smoker is introducing someone to something you love but that's that's different though that's you choosing to give them the cigar to True. introduce it to them not them begging you for a cigar yeah. right i have been given quite a number of cigars and i think part of being given the cigar is is uh helps you enjoy it to some degree well I cigars mean, are about making memories so somebody gives yeah. it to you and you have a good conversation with the cigar you're gonna have a better experience experience yeah. with that cigar yeah. Here's yeah. one. Do share the wealth. If somebody asks you, you know, what are you smoking? Tell them about the cigar. Oh, yeah. Or share with them some cigars that you really enjoy in hopes that, you know, they'll, you'll spur them on to try something new. Okay. Taking the band off or leaving the band on. It's a huge topic on some of our previous content comments. People so saying, take the band off as soon as you buy it. No one, no one cares what you're smoking. You're just showing off if you leave the band on. I care. I silently judge you by what you're smoking, personally. <laughs> Mine is. Here's the thing. Like this is. I look at this. This is how you handle it at PCA. If you get a cigar that you don't like and you're not going to finish it, take the band off before you toss it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. Just because you didn't like it doesn't mean the next guy won't. Right. Right. Taste is very, very unique very to you. Very subjective. Yeah. So that's mine. As far as do I care what you're smoking? No, because honestly, if you want to go throw forty dollars at a cigar, God bless you. But I'd rather smoke four great cigars that are better than that forty cigar dollar cigar for ten bucks a cigar. Yeah, right. And if you see that that like one third cigar smoked with the Gurkha band or whatever, whatever your you know whatever's on it, sitting in the ashtray. That's a pretty. That's that's not a vote of. Uh, well, no, and that, and that and really that only really hurts the lounge, right? Because somebody else comes in and they see that cigar sitting there. If they notice it, and they're like, "Oh, well, I'm never going to buy that cigar." Somebody else didn't like it, right? It's right. that perception. Yeah. So if you're going to do it, pull the band. If you're sitting smoking a cigar down like we are, you know, we know we're going to get through the first, second, and nub it or get it really small. You know, pull the band off when you feel like it. You yeah. know. Yeah. I, I heard one time, and I don't know the truth of this. Maybe you guys can enlighten me. Somebody told me that. In the U.S., people pull the bands off sooner, and in Europe, they'll smoke almost all the way down to the band before they pull it. I don't know if that's true, but if you sit in a cigar lounge and watch, it's really funny. You'll see how many guys open a cigar, they pull it out, they'll do the smell if they smell it, whatever. They'll look at it, they'll cut it, and before they even light it, you'll see them pull the band off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the only time I have a hard and fast rule about taking the band off is if the band goes around the foot. Yeah. Just right. burning paper, yeah, and, 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 burning paper and, and, doesn't If it goes around good, the you know. foot... Pro yeah. tip. Pro tip. Yeah, take it take off. Take it off before you light it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if the flame is like six, seven inches above the cigar, you probably didn't take that off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a problem with people leaving a band on. I don't really care what you smoke. I don't think people are showing off. I think maybe there are some conceited people out there that want everyone to know they're smoking a $40 cigar. Who gives a shit? Right. I, I really don't care what you're smoking. I'll ask you what you're smoking if you enjoy it, but I, I don't judge you one way you or the other. Yeah, if somebody's right. enjoying a cigar, ask them, hey, what do you like about that cigar? What is it that, that attracts right. you to that cigar? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'll say this too, especially when it comes to cigars, price does not dictate no. quality and smoking experience. No. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. There just, are some very, very good, inexpensive cigars out there, and there are some very, very crap, expensive cigars. Right. Absolutely. Look, one of my least favorite cigars I've ever smoked, and people think I'm completely crazy when I say this. So it didn't happen until actually this last year at PCA. We went into a local lounge in Vegas, killing some time, and they had Atabays. I've never had an Atabay, mm -hmm. so I bought two of them. Those aren't cheap cigars. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, I think I dropped a hundred bucks after taxes and everything on the two. I didn't even finish the first one. I pulled the band, tossed it in. Mm -hmm. I gave the other one away. Least favorite cigar I've ever smoked. Mm. And it was a forty, forty five dollar cigar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which Which might be somebody's go to. Right. Obviously, you got to have a little cash on hand if that's your go-to. Last time I was here, I touched on the fact that I have I don't enjoy Cohiba cigars. Right, I've just never really had one that's done anything for me. It's not to say that they're a bad brand; they're just not my thing. Right, and some people love them. Yeah. Well, my first Cohiba, my very first Cohiba, it was uh, an American Cohiba, not a not a Cuban Cohiba, but it was an absolute nicotine bomb, and my head was spinning <laughs> about halfway through. <laughs> I had yeah. to sit for sure. There's a, see, the, and I agree with you. There's only one Cohiba I'll smoke, mm-hmm. and it's the one you can't get. Yeah. So I won't waste my hard-earned money right. on a Cohiba. I would much rather buy two Stolen Thrones or two Family by Loyalty or three, depending on what Cohiba is. I might be able to squeeze three of those other cigars in there yeah. and have three great experiences. Yeah. You know? Point. So I don't think, you know, that's something, too, is don't let the price make you think it's a better quality cigar. Absolutely. The, the other one I think that's interesting is you see this. Don't let the band make you think it's a, a better yeah. Just because yeah. the band's pretty doesn't mean the cigar's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so don't pick your cigars based solely on the band. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, yeah. when you're a newbie, you kind of have to because, I mean, I, I admit I did that for a long time. I, I only, you know, I'd, I'd wander through the humidor and I'd look for something that catched my eye and it would be the cool band. And, I mean, I admit that. Now, I don't do that anymore. Now, I know what I want to smoke. Right. But the cool band is, is a part of the cigar. Do you admit that you ask yourself in the middle of a lounge? Man, too? I was trying to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, just, that's the other thing, though, with a do, though. Right? Well, part of that was trying to get the dang band off of the cigar, which can be a challenge sometimes <laughs> when you've had five glasses of port <laughs> I have two and a half tops it is a much bigger challenge at that point so something about the band is i don't know if a lot of people know this or not but there's they put i can't remember what the what the type of glue is that they use on that but it's it's something that if it gets on the cigar it's not going to cause you to have cancer in the mouth or anything it's a like vegetable that, starch or something. it's a yeah. vegetable yeah. but uh it's it's sometimes really difficult to take the band off of a cigar, but if you let the cigar burn down to where it's closer to the band, it'll actually warm that glue up and it'll come off a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. The uh, so, you know, and if you're a new cigar smoker, See? leverage <laughs> the help in the lounge. Yeah. You may know you you know you may not know what you like, but you've got a couple things. You might <laughs> know a tasting note that you like. You might know a wrapper that you like. Mm-hmm. You know, expand that palette, but do go use the resources of that shop, the people that work there to help that, you know, that, I mean, because it's going to actually make your journey a better journey, right? Because if you know you like a Connecticut Broadleaf and you go, hey, what are the Connecticut Broadleafs? And you can go look at just those cigars, you you know, you're going to like something about it. But don't just get stuck in one lane either. That's the cool thing with cigars. There's so many wrappers. Just how they change. Even if you get five cigars that have the same wrapper, binder, and filler, they're going to taste. You're going to have different tasting notes. They're going to have different experiences because of the percentages in there. Mm. So use the lounge, use the people, use the community. I was told at one point in time, I forget which which one of the factory reps it was, but um, whereas back in the day when cigars first started becoming cool, there were only. I don't know, 10 or 12 or 20 something different varieties of tobacco out there. Now there are tens upon tens of thousands of different varieties of cigars. So even if you get a Connecticut broadleaf to cigar uh, or wrapper, there's probably 150 different variations of that Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Right. And so every one of them is going to taste different. So when you go brand to brand to brand or even... Um, uh, origin to origin. origin origin yeah there's going to be a tremendous difference in, right. in the flavor i tend to, to like connecticut broadleafs i think i've made it a point a while back to say that my my favorite is cameroon um but uh yeah there's there's so many different varieties of them out there that it's so hard to just lock yourself into one right. why not try a little bit of everything so that's i mean we've we've hit it this a couple of times it's, there's this um there's this idea out there that if if it's a lighter cigar, it'll if it's a lighter color cigar, it'll be lighter. But that's really not true 
so much anymore, you can get uh, a very strong cigar that has a very light wrapper. So let me ask you this. Have you any of you guys ever had La Hero? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. What was your impression of Lajero? I mean, your your taste profile, flavor notes. It, it wasn't my cup of tea. Okay. It, it, me, it depends on what it's blended with. If okay. it's too much Lajero, I don't like it. But it, it, with having some in there is a nice. Would you say that Lajero is typically a stronger tobacco? Or... I would say that. Like a Lajero and a double Lajero. Yeah. You're going to expect to get a lot of flavor out of that so when i went to the camacho factory uh manuel batista the the uh president of the company bent my mind backwards when he handed me a cigar that was a sweet mild lajero hmm. right i've it never had any, every the lajero cigar i've ever had was like you know double double lajero or something like that you know like uh um oh i forgot the name of the company now but there's one company that just they everything that they do has lajero on it um, but this was a sweet, mild Lajero that was actually very, it was just as creamy as you would expect a Connecticut cigar to be. So, wow. yeah, like I say, a lot of different variations out there and you, you don't know what you're going to find until you actually try it. Yeah. I, I think that that would be my number one do also is don't get locked in any one particular brand, yeah. any one particular blend, what wrapper, you know. The cigar lounges and humidors have a variety in them for a reason. Mm. Try, experiment, yeah. try different cigars. The, there's a whole world of flavor that I know guys that for 20 years, they buy the exact same cigar. And when it gets discontinued or the company goes under or gets sold, they'll find another one and then they that's it. That's all they buy. Yeah. There's you nothing know. wrong with that. But in the sense that, like, so new cigar smokers who, who, who come to any cigar store, you're going to find one particular brand in there um, that's, that's everywhere. And, and it's going to be cheap, and it's pretty much the, the thing that everybody uh, tends to start with, but you don't, have to, you don't have to stay with that. Right. You know, look at, I look at it this way when it comes down to cigars. It's like if you're a steak eater, right? You go to a restaurant, you're always eating different steaks. Some of them are better, some of them are worse, and some of them you remember 10 years later, mm. right? It's kind of like cigars. You go into a cigar lounge, you could smoke the same thing. That'd be like eating the same steak every day for the rest of your life. Yeah. How many other good steaks did you miss because you never changed, yeah. right? right? It's no different. Like, there's cigars out there, and I'm a huge Cameroon fan also. That's that's my favorite rapper. Yeah. Um, there's actually a couple Cameroons out there that I just thoroughly don't enjoy, Yeah. right? And it's not that I don't like the rapper. I don't like everything else that goes into right, it right? right so that doesn't mean i'm gonna quit smoking cameroons it just means i had to get through some duds along the way to figure out what i really liked yeah you know right. it's like mike likes the san andreas rapper that's just probably i'd have to say is probably his favorite rapper currently i'm not going to say forever but currently you know if he sees that you're drawn to that rapper but that doesn't mean that every one of them you smoke you want to smoke all the time right right it's not that oh i don't like this rapper you know there was a um, I wasn't a San Andreas fan for the longest time. I'm not a huge full flavored cigar guy. I like a medium to medium plus cigar. I'm a huge Habano guy mm -hmm. right now. And a lot of the cigars out there, if you go look in your guy's humidor, Emerson's humidor, any humidor in the Hampton roads, I would probably say safely 70% of them are Habano type Habano or Habano offshoot wrappers. Yeah. Out of those, though, there's a whole bunch of them that you're not going to like. Right. Right. But there's also going to be a whole bunch of them that you do like. And so just because you find a cigar that you don't like doesn't mean that you're not going to like any cigar like that. You just don't like that cigar. Yeah. The other one is that I always think about is that, okay, so I'm going to say this. There's a cigar company out there. I actually wrote them off years ago, and it's Southern Draw. I smoked a cigar from Southern Draw. It was my first experience with them. I smoked the Rosa Sharon, which everybody says is a great cigar. I hated it. I that was my it. that was my but that was my first experience with them. Mm -hmm. It took two years for me to even think about it again. The only reason I smoked one is somebody sent me one this past Christmas. I got it in early mid December mm -hmm. as part of a secret Santa. You know, I don't know who sent it, but it had the fire thorn in it. Yeah, and I was, I, I smoked everything else they sent me by that cigar, and I was like, okay, somebody spent the money, somebody cared enough to give it to me. I should smoke this. Mm -hmm. So we sat down playing cards in, in the garage. Had lit the, I lit that cigar up with a bunch of buddies. Thoroughly enjoyed that cigar. Since then, I bought a ton of them. Yeah. I've done now. I've done this. I did, went and tried the Kudzu. I did a Jacob's Ladder. I did some mm -hmm. of the other stuff. 
So the other day I was like, okay, against my better judgment, I'm going to try a Rosa Sharon again. Mm -hmm. So I bought one. Next morning woke up, made me my cup of coffee like I always do. I, I, I smoke cigars like Daco taught me to from GTO. Mm -hmm. Light cigars in the morning, medium cigars in the afternoon, strong cigars in the evening. That way you can smoke as many cigars as you can in a day yeah. without blowing your palate, right? Mm -hmm. Woke up, got the cup of coffee. I was like, okay, here we go. I, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, I, I Mentally, I was already determined I was going to hate the cigar, right? Mm -hmm. Lit it. First couple draws, I was like, yep, just as bad as I remember. But I told myself I'm going to smoke the whole cigar no matter what, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that may just be military mindset at that point, right? I yeah. determined I was going to do it. Yeah. Love it or hate it, I'm going to get there. Got past the first inch, and I thoroughly enjoyed the rest of that cigar with my cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so just because it's something that I wrote off, doesn't mean that two years down the road your palate's not going to change. And when I first started smoking cigars, I was very particular. I only smoked certain leaves. Yeah. Now, I don't care. I smoke a cigar. And there's something about what you were just talking about there, where the time of day that you smoke a cigar, what you've eaten yep. prior to smoking a cigar will affect the cigar. Um, I used to always ask customers when they come in the store, "What was the last thing you ate?" Right. And I could determine what kind of cigar they would have after that. For instance, if they came in, they, they said, I just had grilled chicken. I'm going to give them a Connecticut cigar. But if they say, say that they just had uh, uh, Chipotle across the street, they just had a spicy-ass burrito, then I'm going to suggest something with a little bit more girth to it. Right. Um, so like you were saying, the Rosa Sharon is a milder cigar. Smoking that yep. earlier in the day, that was a, that was a great move. Mm -hmm. um, it, like you say, start out milder and earlier in the day and then kind of work yep. your way up. Or like I say, if you have something really, really spicy for lunch, bear that in mind. Otherwise, you know, if you go in there, you just had that spicy burrito, you light up a Connecticut cigar, it's going to be like smoking a sheet of notebook paper. There's nothing to it. Right. Um, so, yeah, that that definitely has a huge effect on, on what, whether or not you're going to enjoy yeah. the cigar. Yeah, yeah, I did. Totally. I did one the other day, Mike. You'll like this. I did a family by loyalty day, so I smoked. I smoked five cigars that day, which was light for me. But, but I did the morning, afternoon, and here's what's interesting. I actually had tasting notes in those that I've not picked up in the hundreds of those that I've smoked mm -hmm. because I didn't go straight to a stronger, medium-bodied cigar to start off. Right. So I think that's something with the lounge. And the other thing is, you know, with the lounge, don't make, I don't care what you smoke. And you shouldn't care what other people smoke. They're smoking what they like. You're smoking what you like. So don't make fun of somebody because they smoke something different. Unless you smoke acids. I'm going to laugh at you if you smoke <laughs> acids. But, you know. One of the guys that, uh, he's one of my good friends, Tim, works over at Emerson, says there's too many syllables in the name of that cigar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, you know. But no, I mean, realistically, people are smoking what they like and find yeah, out why yeah. they like it. You might learn something new. Yeah. So what's that? Don't make fun of them and do have a conversation because you're going to learn something from them. Yeah. Right. Another thing I recommend, I do a lot of travel for work and I go to um, whatever local cigar shops I in the yeah. area that I'm in. Try their house cigars. Um, I know that there are some places where you go where their house cigars aren't really that great. But I know, for instance, at Emerson's, their house cigars are made by Camacho. Right. Uh, so, uh, and they've also got some house cigars made by Rocky Patel. You find some gems there. Right. I've gone to some places where I tried their house cigar and I'm thinking, this is freaking fantastic. And it was three bucks. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you can't very beat that. affordable. My favorite cigar of last year was actually a house cigar mm -hmm. from what, Willie's. What house? Yeah. Huh? What house was it? Willie's house. Willie's. Willie's. Willie has my favorite cigar of last year and it was a house blend. And it was a fluke that I found it. And I've sh bought them, shared them, yeah. sent them to guys. Other people have actually called him going, hey, how do we get more of these? And it was a house stick. Yeah. It was you know, a $7 cigar. There's a place yeah. up in, in Williamsburg. Uh, I can't remember the name of the shop. I think it's Little Havana or something like That's that. Havana Nights. Havana Nights, yeah. yeah they Havana they have, they, when I was in there one time, I uh, picked up a couple of their Cameroon house cigars. And I'm going, oh my God, this is a great cigar. And it was like, you know, three, four bucks. Yeah. So you'll find, you know, again, price mm -hmm. doesn't constitute yeah exactly quality exactly. and experience or yeah. flavor or yeah. flavor yeah. yeah absolutely and it's be also because they don't spend a whole lot of money on packaging them to make them look really nice right yeah most like of them that. are unbanded they, typically they're going to be the bargain brand cigars but again a lot of them you can find some really good ones in there yeah agree absolutely agree what else on don'ts let's finish let's finish strong with don'ts because i think the do's are pretty obvious right yeah. do enjoy yourself do try different cigars you know, do be a, a decent human, 
but don'ts. Well, one thing you can do with don'ts is uh, obviously you don't want to crush out your cigar because yeah. it, it's kind of smelly. You know, you want to let your cigar die with dignity when you're done with it. You just set it set it down. Yep. Let and it also, out. if if you if you mash out the cigar, it's it's disrespectful towards the person that you know put the time into rolling it for you. Um, so that's why they. You, yeah. If you enjoy the cigar, don't mash it. Right. One thing I, I have learned, and I heard this, and I didn't really believe it until I made a mess of my own, and that's when you bang the cigar on the on the ashtray, it kind of it kind of lets some of the ash get out into the air, and it kind of mm -hmm. gets all over the place. So if you gently roll your cigar, when you got a bit of ash on there, you got like a half inch or an inch, you know, depending on what you're smoking. You just kind of roll it on the edge of the ashtray, and it falls in there. Mm -hmm. You don't make a, a mess, but if you if well, bang I'll, it on the side, yeah, I'll go to the don't don't make a mess and leave it. They're not your yeah, personal yeah, cleaning right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right, like I mean, I always have a soda with me. I don't drink booze. I always have a soda, usually good <laughs> sodas. Clean up, you know, when you leave, you have cigar wrappers, you've yep. got bands. cigar bands. Maybe you got some ash on the table. Please yourself, you know, leave it how you found it. Yep. You know, no different than if you're hiking in the woods, right? Right. Leave no trace. Don't leave ash all over the chair. Don't yeah. Don't burn the chair. That's don't burn the chair. Yeah. That's my one is man. You'll see guys doing stuff and all of a sudden you'll see them not paying attention. Their cigar hits the arm of the chair and now you burned a hole in someone's yeah. chair. I feel We're, personally attacked by this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can ash on yourself to, and don't ash on somebody else. There you go. Right. That's that's not very polite. But no, I mean that's don't, the thing. don't throw your ash when you go to shake their hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I think. Hey, here's a pro tip. Yeah. Don't spit in an ashtray. Right. Mm, yeah. This is actually, it, that, that is a pro tip. Do not spit in the ashtray. <laughs> Don't lick your cigar and ask somebody to use their cutter? Yeah. Oh, that's another thing. If you're going to use the house cutter, don't lick the cigar. Don't don't wet the end of it before you use the house cutter. Right. Yeah. Yep. Or just know when you use the house cutter. Somebody else has done it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That could have happened. Always best to carry your own cutter. Or a pocket knife. Or a pocket knife. Or just rip the end off with your teeth, either one. <laughs> and if you go into a uh, cigar shop that carries pipes, I used to see this, and if I saw somebody doing it, I usually tell them they bought the pipe, but don't put the pipe in your mouth before you buy it. Because oh, yeah. it's going to go back on the shelf, or, and especially don't, yeah, don't do this with the cigar. Put it right up under your nose yeah. when you're, it, that's just bad, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nobody you know, nobody wants your snot on their no, cigar. Yeah, no. I, I know it's a popular thing in the movies to, you know, run the cigar underneath your nose to inhale to try to get a sense for the flavor by the aroma, but it's really kind of a fallacy. You're not going to be able to tell how that cigar is going to taste by that no. act. If you want to smell the cigar, smell the foot of the cigar, but do it with your nose about an inch away from it. Uh, that way you're going to actually be able to tell what the, the filler and the binder is going to add to the cigar. Whereas if you just do this on the side of the cigar, all you're getting is the wrapper. It's yeah, not going to yeah. tell you much. That's a good point. And especially if you smell the side of like a Cameroon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're so potent. Yeah. Well, just about now, just about everything ships in cellophane anyway. So you yeah. have to almost take it out of the cellophane. In order I watched to somebody do that the other day actually in the lounge. Yeah. They actually took it out. Sniffed it and then sat there and tried to get it back in the cellophane. No, 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 no. If you unwrap it, you bought it. That's yep. that's that's the yeah. rule. Yeah. 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 So don't unwrap them till they're yours yeah. or they're now yeah. yours. <clears throat> because if if they yeah. if if you do that, it's like uh, breadsticks at a at um, a restaurant. You go in there and you take the breadsticks, and if you don't eat them, they're going to take them and throw them away because they don't want somebody else's spooge or whatever on the on the breadsticks. They're going to yeah. give somebody else. Fair Absolutely. enough. Absolutely. Yeah, Olive Garden. Pick the mm -hmm. breadstick up. You own it. Yep. You own it. Yep. Yeah, but that's you know, but that's the thing. But again, though, that to me that goes back to the number one don't rule. Yeah. Don't be a don't be dick. Don't be a dick. You know, I mean, because it's just common courtesy. Like, you know, you were raised better than that, man. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, I was raised better than that, and I'm down near caveman half of the time. So <laughs> you know, yeah. exactly. And don't hey, I'll say this too. This is a good don't. Don't say something that you wouldn't say next to your mama or your grandma. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. You know, if you wouldn't say in front of your mama and your grandma. You're saying, don't say something? Yeah. That if you wouldn't say to your To your mama or your grandma. Oh, well, I wouldn't want my mom or my grandma in most of our conversations in the cigar lounge. <laughs> 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 we do have to give a shout out because I missed this in the beginning to our again, sponsor. Again. Yeah. Um, oh, our sponsor, sponsor is Family by Loyalty. We do. Mm. 
You can see some of their products in the front right here. If you're a savvy uh, internet user, you can figure out how to get them from Toro Cigar Company. It's not that hard. They have wonderful products. They support us. We support them. It's a it's a it's a good relationship. Absolutely, and they make out. great cigars. Yep. Shout out to Alan for jumping on board and sponsoring this podcast. Um, now it's our first sponsor. We're super proud. Uh, we wouldn't, you know, w we wouldn't accept a sponsor that we don't, weren't fully behind and believe in to begin with. Um, but super proud that that Alan and and his company have decided to jump on board and sponsor this podcast. We're super proud of that. Yep. And now we, we get to jump into our Ooh. our section that we've added to the podcast, which is comments. We love comments. Most of them are quite good. And today's comment, not being an absolute roast of us, um, is a good comment. I'll let Mike Bank take this one. But I, I doubt Mike can read it because you highlighted the text. It's did. gray on black. I did. I can read it over there. Can you read it from there? <laughs> it looks like a no. Nope. Not, I can read the ones on white on black, but not that one. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do about that? Uh, let let me read it. All right. Now, can he remember all those words though without looking more than once after his port? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you guys are awesome. I mean, that's kind of a given. Alan is my brother from another mother. Great. Alan is the owner of Family Loyalty. And it was a great podcast. Yeah. Yep. That, that was from Cigar Crumbs. Who's Cigar Crumbs. Great guy. Great guy. Uh, huge supporter of Toro Cigar Company. Um, and, you know, he likes all of our stuff on Instagram. He's made several orders from us. We really appreciate the positive feedback, bro. Um, you know, you, you've been around since, since day one with Toro. And we can't tell you how much we appreciate the support and the positive comments and feedback. It keeps us going. You know, we do have some trolls on our stuff, you know, not a whole lot. But, but hey, if you want, come on and troll us. Just understand, the roast goes both ways. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Feel yeah. free to troll. We, we, You can't hit us harder than we hit ourselves. Right. Or hit back. Or hit back. <laughs> I love a keyboard warrior. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. So it was a great episode, uh, Do's and Don'ts in the Cigar Lounge. Hopefully, if you've not been in a Cigar Lounge, we give you some ammunition to go in and do it the right way. And if you are hanging out in Cigar Lounges now and you've been violating any of our don'ts, no problem. Just don't do it anymore. It's okay. Just make a slight correction. Next time you go into Cigar Lounge, now you know how to behave. <laughs> Simple, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We hope you uh, like the, the content. And if you do, please like, comment, and share um, the, the content on YouTube, on Instagram. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. We appreciate it, guys. And as always, be a man, carry a gun, smoke cigars. Until don't, next week, we'll see you. Don't blow cigar smoke in other people's faces. Well, there you go. That's another don't. Have a great week, guys.